I'm deciding to talk about the Frito Lay's case because. I thought that this dude's story should be heard by as many people as possible. And even if my voice is small, I, I definitely want to bring some awareness to this. What happens when you take capitalism very, very far? This is, you know, you kind of, you can get this. And it's, it's very, uh, it's very bad. They are stalking us. Recording my kids playing in the yard. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I tried to hold it in, I'm sorry. So I got the job at Frito-Lay in January of 2011. Prior to Frito-Lay, I was in the United States Navy. Leaving the service, he just needed to matter. He needed to belong and have a purpose. We both thought he found that in Frito-Lay. And so we kind of centered our life around it. I worked hard. I bust my butt every day, in and out. Shit, my wife was gonna divorce me because she didn't even think I was at work for real. No, I did not believe my husband just spent 20 hours at work. No one would believe that. He's not a doctor. So we've had it established. This man has been working here like, like 20 hour days sometimes. Like he, he, he really works hard here. It's chips. It's chips and dip. I went on a stretch one time of like 26 days in a row. Was using the dock door. You press the button and it automatically does what it's supposed to do. I got electrocuted. I was taken to the ER, but the emergency room they took me to was 45 minutes away. We passed four hospitals on the way to the hospital they wanted to take me to. And the reason it is is because they sign a contract with a certain hospital and a certain network. From the... That, that should just not... I, I think that, that should not be allowed. You should not be able to... No, so he wasn't overworking. He... Well, he was. I think, I think this is just too many hours for someone to work but like that wasn't what caused the incident it was he pressed the he pressed the button and there was something wrong with this button that caused him to get electrocuted and he had to go to the hospital for it and the hospital they sent him to was further away and he could have gone to a hospital sooner and gotten care sooner but the money involved made it to where that that didn't happen. And I don't think that should be the case. I think people should just go to the nearest place for them to get help. Like, that's like, what if the injury was worse? What if it was like, like he had a very limited amount of time before, you know, he, he could have died. It It could have been a lot more immediately life threatening and he if it was he could have died he might not have had 45 minutes if he got injured in a in a more severe way so um i don't think that that should be allowed you shouldn't be allowed to like make financial deals with hospitals as like an employer it just it just doesn't make sense to me very next day after the accident, my husband was never the same. He was working really hard to even just get up on to the side of the bed. And usually he's like hops out of bed and he hurries up, puts his clothes on and he shoves food down his throat and he's out the door. You know, in 30 minutes, he was used to it. He was trained to do that in the service. When I say I was healthy as an ox, I was healthy as an ox. We just didn't have any answers. They said he should have been fine, but he wasn't. I didn't get any time off after the incident. Uh, I was no time off after the incident you get in imagine you get injured at work so bad to the point where you have to go to the hospital and they don't give you any time off i had to call off the next day as a sick day i told you i was in pain i told like how could you like that is you forced him to use a sick day? You have a corporation and a, a business 
that cares more about profit than it does people and it just sees you as a tool for labor like that this is what you get you you get people ending up being treated like this and it's just it's just awful I told you it hurts when i walk and it was like okay you know are you gonna be here tomorrow i was a site lead and I know what that entails. Your leadership is a whole warehouse. So if you have to fill in, you have to fill in. I asked for some type of relief, period, because I was still obligated to work, like picking cases and unloading trucks or rotating product on a forklift. I asked for a chair that I could probably, that I could sit in that would make me more comfortable while I'm doing my office work. They denied it. You're either a hundred. He didn't even get the, he asked for the chair just for office work. He had to stand and do office work. Like, what the hell? 100% or you can't work. It just felt like they was just trying to push me out. Eventually I got an MRI by my primary doctor and he showed that I had two herniated discs in my back. And he was like, you shouldn't be doing anything. They could only fix it with surgery. And my husband still had to work this whole entire time. They had to remove two of the discs in my neck because they were bulging into my spinal cord. I wasn't getting enough fluid to my brain. If I didn't have the surgery, the doctor said any small fall or accident or something like that, and I would have been paralyzed from the neck down or dead. I still have to have surgery on my lower lumbar spine. From the moment that he... So if he, you know, to keep working in such a state, like, it's life-threatening. He is put in a in a life-threatening situation just to go to work, and... Yeah, I mean, he he has to go to work to survive because they're not going to give him paid time off. And this is the concept of wage slavery, where you cannot live without your wage. You cannot live without working. If you get hurt, it, it just sucks. The, the company's just like, yeah, sucks. Go fuck yourself. Like, that that is what this is this is this person is living proof of of like what this concept is he couldn't work anymore and needed short-term disability frito-lay abandoned us i had to file for short-term disability and then long-term disability got approved for long-term disability but that was months later so no income coming in that's a picture of the car we were driving. They require you to go to the doctor so many times, and the doctor has to say that you're in this condition over and over and over. But guess what? That is very true. If you, I mean, I've dealt with this a little bit with um, my work. I work at a restaurant. And if you have to call in sick for a day you have to at my work you have to get a doctor's note for that day and if you're sick like the next day or the you know the day after like your note says oh it, you might be sick from this day to this day you might be sick for like three days if you're sick for like a fourth day you're gonna need to get another note and you're gonna need to go to the doctor every single time and to go to the doctor it costs money, has to keep paying every time to see these doctors and his work isn't going to help him. You'll see. You don't have any insurance anymore through PepsiCo slash Frito-Lay because they cut you off. I had to pay for that out of pocket too. <laughs> Didn't have the money to do that. So guess what? I borrowed money or used credit cards or whatever I could. <laughs> I even took money out of my kids. We had to take from our children to live. 
And the doctor knew what was going on. So he was like, look, just pay half of what you owe every visit and we'll just take care of the rest later. I never wanted to have... It's just very sad and, and hard to watch, like, just how a corporation can just damage and hurt an individual like this. Like, it's... It's incredibly awful and sick. It's not okay. A lawsuit to sign me, but I did ask for help, and I wasn't getting it. Frito-Lay, Pepsi, Sedgwick, whoever has people following my family, they are stalking us. Just to find something to be like, oh, he's okay. Recording my kids playing in the yard, recording me doing yard work. They follow me in traffic, on the highway, on streets. They follow me when I gave birth to my baby. They follow me to my daughter's school. I took my daughter out of school and decided to homeschool because I don't know if we're safe. I don't know how many people they've given our address and name and information. What's interesting about this is that, like, it costs money to pay people to do this. And it also costs money, like, to be in, like, a lawsuit and to, like, be in court and stuff that there are expenses there. And, and this all could have been avoided and the money could have been spent on getting him care i don't know i i just find that like they would it, it's strange that they would rather do this than to help him with his accident like information to just to prove my husband wrong they've done it for years why are you fighting so hard to say that i'm not hurt instead of just Look at the paperwork, look at the medical stuff, look at everything I've been through. You would think that I'm a bad employee, the way that everything has went. I've never done anything wrong to this company or even with this company. I have numerous awards to show that I'm not a person that you just throw away. I knew the sales side, I knew the operation side. I mean, hell, you could have just let me be a lead and just manage instead of physically working. Billion dollar corporations like Pepsi, which owns Frito-Lay, they know this is happening to people and they do nothing about it. My husband shouldn't have to fight for five years over something that took less than five minutes to impact our entire life. He pushed a button at work, a button he can't avoid pushing. He has to push it, it's his job. For a company that talks about diversity and culture and a family-oriented business, Family don't just throw you out because you get injured. The company makes over $200 billion a year, okay? It's chips. But my husband is worth zero dollars to them because he's no longer able to push those chips. You are a number. You're a piece of property. I bust my butt for them. Blood, sweat, tears, sacrifices, holidays, birthdays. I miss so much family things because they make you feel like if you don't do what they say, they will they will let you go. Yeah, um, he's he really I feel like if anybody understands what it feels like to. Like feel like you're disposable to a company, it's definitely this guy. Um when you work a minimum wage job, you feel very disposable. You feel very worthless. You feel like a cog in the machine and like your life just doesn't matter to them and that they care more about what they need done more than like whatever you have going on. Like, so I can kind of like empathize with him here not completely to you know his extent but i don't even know where to go from here honestly all the life goals and marriage goals and family goals that we had are gone and i, I just have to figure out how to survive and my goal and hopes and dreams now 
for my husband to get back healthy and still be alive with us in the future. He dodged bullets in the city of St. Louis growing up. He dodged gangs. He stayed out of all of that. He went to war. He dodged bullets and bombs and came back to me. And now he's been electrocuted at work. We don't know what's gonna happen from day to day. My husband stops breathing at night in his sleep. I have to wake him up at night to make sure he keeps breathing. I have to help with my children who don't understand they can't jump and play with daddy. I mean, I just went from a very fit guy to a guy who is disabled and can barely just handle regular life stuff. I'm 36, I should be able to play with my kids in the yard. I just want my life back. I just thought it was important to, for people to hear Brandon's story um, and to show that, you know, that this story very much explains what is wrong with the way we distribute wealth in this country and the way we give corporations so much power and the way the medical institutions um, really make it difficult for you to get by and just to live. His name is Brandon Ingram. Um, and I don't know if there is any way to support his family is anyone boycotting frito-lays a lot of people in the comments are talking about it like this person i'm boycotting frito-lay specifically now like very it's very understandable i i would totally be on board with that boycotting pepsi and frito-lay to support him Definitely want to see more people talking about it because this is this is really important. 